Hello and welcome to Reservoir Red Dogs. I'm Matt Ford. Paul McGregor is away this week, this fortnight, this episode. So replacing him is the more than able Johnny Owen. Johnny, hello. Hello, how are you doing? You okay? Very good, you're sounding all very coy and shy then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's nice to be here. It's nice Stepping to be here. out of the shadows, it's your big chance. Absolutely. <laughs> And joining us today is a true club legend, one of the most requested guests we've ever had. He's Forrest's fifth all-time oh. top goal scorer. Right. Played for Forrest 11 years. He was top scorer in every season for Forrest from 1966 to 1972. Scored 118 goals in 236 appearances. It's the legend Ian Storymore. Ian, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Matt and Johnny. Very kind of you to invite me. Well, we are delighted to have you here. Yes. Well, it's that long ago since I played. You know, I don't think even the wife remembers me now, uh, Matt. So. <laughs> what but we no. always try to do is, is talk to players from so many different eras. Uh -huh. And we had Marlon Harewood on the last episode. Oh, yeah. We've talked to Robbo and, and John McGovern and Gary Burtles uh -huh. from the uh, and Frank Clark from, European there, from, Cup. from the European Absolutely. Cup era. You're the first guest we've had from the pre-Clough era. Right. Which in Forest history is, a, is oft neglected in terms of people's knowledge and it doesn't get the attention no. That, no. that it often gets. Um, mm. But there were some phenomenal periods in Forest history. Uh, and, I mean, any supporter you talked to was around at the time. Uh, credits you with single-handedly keeping Forrest alive as a club <laughs> during that period. Well, I mean, I wouldn't go as far as that. I mean, you know, you have to have teammates, don't you, really? But, um, you know, I had the good fortune of probably... Um, I had this ability to score goals. And I think that, you know, even at school, schoolboy level, I had that ability. And so it sort of transformed itself all the way through to senior football. So, yeah, I was fortunate in that respect that I could score goals. But without, without your teammates, you know, it wouldn't be possible. Uh, so you signed for Forest in 67 from Scunthorpe? Oh, no, no, I came oh, no. to... Oh, no, that's when Forest finished second in the league in that's 67, right, yeah. wasn't it? No, I, I well, came... Well, Matt, you're really on the way. Done his homework. Wikipedia's like... Yeah. from Sunny No, I, I came to Forest yeah. as a kid in, I think it was 61, 62, actually. Right. Yeah, giving my age away now, aren't I? But, uh, yeah, many years ago and uh, came on the ground stuff as you had to in those days. You know, cleaning the players' boots cleaning all the muck up after the games, etc., sweeping the dressing rooms, keeping the ground clean, and, uh, yeah, so that's what you had to do in those days. They don't have to do that now, do they? No, Forrest, sadly Forrest, not. Forrest had a great team, though, didn't they, in the late 50s, they won the FA Cup. Yeah, year, I mean, here's, here's a quiz for all Forrest supporters. Who is the only person from that cup-winning team still alive? Do you know? Jeff Lightfoot, is it? Well done, Johnny. Oh, wow. Yeah, he's the only... Actually, I was out having lunch with him on Sunday, but he looks really well. Jeff's about 85 now. Wonderful player, by the way. And they had some wonderful players in that team, but Jeff was a really, really top, top player. He midfield a, he player. He was a Busby babe as well, wasn't he? He was. And here's another quiz about Man United fans, I bet, don't know about Jeff Whitefoot. Do you know he still holds a record for the youngest player ever to make his debut for Man United? Wow. wow. Even now? Even now. So I mean, how old was he when he made his debut? 16, 16 wow, plus really. so many months. I'm not quite sure, but he's still the youngest. Still holds a record, yeah. So what a phenomenal you know, achievement that is, isn't it? Oh, we should have to try and get him on here. Yeah, it, yeah, Jeff. I was with him on Sunday, actually, yeah. That'd he's, be amazing. Yeah, the yeah, 59 yeah, side. Yeah. I'll have to carry him in now, you know. I mean, you know <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Well, that's super. No, he's a really good friend of mine, him and his wife. And he's, he's a great guy and uh, super footballer. And I say, the only one still alive from that wonderful... 50, is it 58, 59? 59, yeah. Cup, yeah, yeah. cup winning side, yeah. That's right. So when you first came to Forest, mm -hmm. paint us a picture of what what the club and what the ground were like. What sort of state were Forest in when you arrived? Um, well, I think they did won the Cup, hadn't they, sort of three or four years earlier. And I think they were just trying to get back on their feet. They got promotion to the, um, the top level, then, which was the first division as, as we knew it. Um, I remember my mother and father, they, they brought me to, because I was brought up in Scunthorpe, actually. Now, have you ever been to Scunthorpe? I've been to Scunthorpe. Yeah. Like it. Well, when it's, you know, you're from London, aren't you? Well, I'm from Nottingham, but I, I live in from, London. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think He's so. more London these days, Ian, if you're Oh, no, don't start <laughs> saying that on air. I'll get is crucified he, on social media. I've still got the accent. Yeah, well, when it's 12 o'clock in London, man, it's about 1949 in Scunthorpe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, it was, actually, it was a bit of a boom town, a bit like some of the Welsh um, yeah, steel, steel places. Town, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, it was a real boom in town in the, in the early, uh, early 60s, and... Um, so I came here as a 16-year-old. I always remember a player called Jeff Vowden. They asked him to look after me. He had another lovely lad, good player, Jeff, as well, and uh, took me around to these digs on Hound Road, you know, at the back of the cricket ground. Yeah, yeah. And I was left there to fend for myself, but soon got into it, yeah. There was about probably eight of us in there, yeah. You know, older players and younger players that are just starting. So, yeah, we soon, we soon got together and uh, started to enjoy life, yeah. 
And that was a period, not just of a footballing change, but a social change as well. The mm. swinging sixties mm. is still an era, obviously, that, we'll that dominates British culture. Well, one hell of a place, isn't it? If you want to enjoy yourself, it was it was really swinging in the sixties. Yeah, you know the the clubs were opening, weren't they? You had um, you had that beetle hairy, and you were a bit of a heart thumb in that. Oh, let's be fair, when you're that time. Yeah. I don't know where it's gone now, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all had long, thick hair in those days, didn't we? But uh, that's dissipated somewhat now. <laughs> yeah, the, the manager of, of when you came in was it was Johnny Carey the manager? Then? No, he wasn't the first man. He was a guy called Andy Beatty. Oh yeah, he yeah. was. He was quite a sort of stern, strict sort of character. And uh, I remember my first week's wages were four pound, four pound fifty. That's right, yeah. But my digs were four pound, so I've got <laughs> fifty pence left for the week to spend. So obviously, like relatively for footballers, not a lot of money. But oh, I mean, it's a young lad. Yeah. An extra oh, 300 well, quid. well, yeah. I mean, extra two pound fifty in those days, you could go out and have what? Probably spend fifty pence, have a great night in those days. You know. Oh my God. Yeah. Incredible! Oh, it was a buzzing, it was a buzz, buzzing city in the sixties. Not even that. Apparently, there was four girls to every man. Apparently, so uh, yeah, yeah, it was, it was good fun. <laughs> I'm sure it was. Yeah. Uh, let's fast forward then to '67 because that really was uh-huh. a, a great period for Forest. Yes, a, it a was, great yeah. season. FA Cup semi finalists and runners up in the league, just four points behind Manchester United at the end of the season. Was it, was it as many as that? I thought it was. Was it four? I thought it was three. Oh, I thought it was four. I checked it on Wikipedia. Oh, you might night. be right. You might be right. I know well, it was quite close. Matt's on fire this morning, so I'm yeah. going to go with you, Ian, on this one. <laughs> no, I come to you, Matt, Matt, to be honest, you might be right, but I just thought it was it was less than that. Actually. I might be right. I'm not I, definitely well, I'm I'm sure. two points for a win in those days, so that's... that's yeah, two points, points for a win, that's right, yeah. Four points, it says on Wikipedia. Yeah, you might, oh, you're probably right. Well, but, Wikipedia's uh, always right, isn't it? I mean, I think what cost us... I think what cost us a champion, actually, we played Manchester United away in February... Wonderful game because I remember to this day we got beaten one nil by a wonderful goal by Dennis Slaw. You know that great uh, icon of, of football scored an overhead kick from a corner and we lost one. We played well. I always remember Matt Busby coming into our dressing room, which is uh, which doesn't happen. He said, you know, he came into our. He said, well, listen, he said that's one of the best games of football I've seen. I'd like you to invite him to the boardroom to have a drink with uh, with our directors after the game, which is most unusual. Yeah. So, you know, that, that was a nice uh, nice gesture from him. But there's a nice link there because Johnny Carey was his captain after the Second World War, That's right. It? Yeah, of course, Johnny Carey was, was our manager yeah. then, yeah. I think he'd come about a couple of seasons before that. And you could sense the season before sort of getting some decent plays together. You know, uh, Johnny Carey had bought Joe Baker, who turned out to be an absolutely, yeah. you know, terrific player. Club Joe. legend. Oh, absolutely good, good player. Henry Newton, uh, he was coming through, you know. Henry, he'd been a, a I think he's a Nottingham boy, and um, he was turning into really, really combative midfield player, but he could play as well, Henry. I think he was a, you know, he would be ideal for today's football, Henry, box to box, put his foot in, but could play as well. Um, John Barwell, who sort of linked things in midfield, he was a very clever player. So, we, you know, we had a nice balance in the team, Matt, and uh, it proved to be we had a very good season. Unfortunately, didn't win anything, though. That's tough, isn't it? With Johnny, um, obviously, you all talk very nostalgically about him, about the way he played, and like Matt was just saying, a little bit overlooked because of Clef and who came later and stuff like that. But he had a great football philosophy, and you played great football at that time. Oh, well. yeah, I mean, his philosophy was, you know, just keep it on the deck. I mean, his team talk was very simple. It was like, fizz it about today, lads, you know, fizz it about. No, typically Irish, isn't it, really? Well, that's quite interesting to think about what Forrest's philosophy was pre Clough. Yeah, exactly. Was there a Forrest DNA that Clough built on? Um, well, I think Cluffy always had this philosophy as well, didn't he? He liked to play good football as well. But, you know, you know, Johnny was, a, and, and to be fair, the, the next manager, Matt Gillis, Gillis always yeah. had this philosophy about trying to play some decent football. I think it was sort of inherited from probably the cup winning days, yeah. that, you know, that Forrest had this DNA that uh, they were a footballing side, yeah. Well, that's interesting because it is, modern history would say, well, Clough, exists, this really, is the Clough it? legacy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But oh, actually, no, this, no, this no, predates. No. Oh, no, I think it predates Cluffy. I mean, he took it over, didn't he, and took it on. I mean, you know, his team at Derby played good football, didn't he? So I think that uh, Cluffy had it in his DNA that he wanted his team to play, didn't he? And, of course, you know, he, he got that wonderful side together, European Cup winning side, didn't he? Which was turned out to be a wonderful team. Uh, so in 67, that, that, that great season, you score a hat-trick against Everton in uh-huh. the quarter-final. That's right, yeah. It's still available on YouTube. It for, is, actually, in black, and, black and white, let me tell you. <laughs> Do you watch it often? I watch it now and again, you know, if you feel sort of a bit nostalgic, can't we, at times. And uh, Pre-match film starts the pre-match yeah, Yes, it does. Yeah. What well, I was going to say. Put it on, yeah. Absolutely. It's, it's, the, it's the celebration, the punch of oh, the air. Christ, Ian is yeah, the yeah. first footballer mentioned in that film. Great goal by Moore. Ian Story Moore. Well, That's right. Well, actually, the, the, the first one, I mean, to be fair, and I've always, I've, I've gone on record as saying this, that Frank Wignall was a star for Forrest that day. You know, we, we didn't play particularly well at all in the first half. We actually got going in the second half. And I think it was down to Frank, actually. He won all his headers. He messed them about at the back. And, um, you know, that was the day that we lost Joe Baker. I don't know if people might remember it. Yeah. 
terrible tackle that by Brian Lebone. That was a huge moment in that season because Joe Baker was oh, a fantastic I, footballer. Absolutely, Johnny. I think if we'd have had Joe Baker that season, we'd have won something. We'd, we, we missed him terribly. Yeah. Really good player, Joe. Quick, but you know, could score goals out of nothing. And uh, yeah, it, it was a sad miss, actually. There's an interesting fact about him, isn't it? He was born in uh, Scotland, Scotland, yeah. but he was but he wanted to play for England, didn't he? There was he some, did, yeah. Some sort yeah. Of, I think he actually played for England. He oh, he played for England, Joe, yeah, yeah, yeah he absolutely. He was born yeah. in Scotland, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he was a legend in Nottingham. Right oh, absolutely. Right but born to Scottish parents in Scotland. I, I believe so. There's some sort of weird mm. thing. Oh, yeah, 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 that's right. Well, he, he came from Hibs, didn't he? Was yeah, it right. Hibs to Arsenal? Yeah. yeah. But great player. Absolute great player, yeah. A lot of people say One of the best centre forwards I've seen, yeah. yeah. And, you know, certainly had the, the privilege to play with, yeah. And so it's one that's on YouTube. Have you seen that video now at the City Ground before? I haven't seen off? it, no, no, because Johnny doesn't let me out of the boardroom. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's quite the thing, I imagine, to see it yeah. at the City Ground on yeah, these big screens. Yeah. Well, as I say, Frank, Frank was a star that day. No, no two ways about it. He set up all the three goals. I think the first one was a tap, and the second one was a decent goal. But to, I mean, I think the last one was a bit of a fluke, to be honest with you. But I think it created that atmosphere. You know, it was a wonderful atmosphere that day. Ugh. My poor old mother was in the stand. I think she fainted not to go out. Yeah. <laughs> oh, bless. A, we found some footage the day, and of, um, it was almost like an historic goal in Forest history. I think it was the goal he scored against Arsenal. Oh, yeah, yeah, Where yeah. you went practically the length of the pitch yeah, yeah. in Forest folklore, and then we found yeah. it, and you did run the length of the pitch. Yeah, well, but, uh, uh, yeah, a long, long way, actually. I think that was about, was it 71-ish? 71, yeah. 71, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and the final turn, we just cut inside and then smashed it. Yeah, fantastic yeah, goal. yeah, yeah. Uh, well, you know, I, mean, I think um, I think it was Alan Ball's debut actually for Arsenal that day. Was it? Yeah, and all, all I can remember him, I think I picked the ball just outside our own box. All I could see in the corner man was these white boots, what ball he was wearing, <laughs> and he was sort of he wasn't the quickest baller to be fair. So I'm not being, uh, but he, yeah, he was running. I could just see these white boots, and I thought, Bloody hell. and they all seemed to back up. And suddenly I was confronted by a wall because they wore yellow shirts, you yeah, know, yeah. the away team Arsenal in those days. I thought, Christ, what do we do? And I don't know how I did it, John. I sort of got quickly gone past three or four players and confronted by Bob Wilson. Bob Wilson the thing course. that came into my mind, Matt, was, oh, Christ, don't miss now. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, I managed to put the ball out. Probably, yeah, I would imagine that's the best goal I've scored, yeah. Well, it's not just the best goal you've scored, it was voted the best ever goal at the City Ground. Was it really? Can yeah. I yeah. Oh, that's, that's good news, yeah. Thank and you. It's available to watch in colour on YouTube, yeah, should yeah. people choose to watch it. The yeah, speed amazing. of it is incredible. Yeah, it looked, and I wasn't as quick as that. I think I've speeded this up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, but happy days, those, and yeah, it's really disappointed for the fans. I mean, the fans were great that season, you know, they're fantastic, you know. We were, we were treated like royalty, actually, everywhere you went, you know, in, in the city. It was it fantastic. Was, some of the biggest crowds in Forest history. Oh, that season, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was 49 plus that day. Wow. Yeah, and whenever you played Man United at home in those days, it was like 48, 49,000. Yeah, because of this, you know, the, all, the terracing. Spike, all terracing, yeah. Fantastic gates they got, yeah. In terms of that period, how much, you know, how many specifics do you remember? Can you still remember? individual games like the Arsenal game the Everton game yeah, or do the seasons blur together somewhat now? tend to blur together don't they but you know you, you sort of I don't know some of the odd game comes into your head and I don't know why um, I was I was always fortunate I don't know, when, we, when we played Newcastle I was fortunate to score against them and you know there's one or two clubs you think oh I'm going to score today but uh, yeah I, you know, I was just thinking the other day I was thinking about all the um, the top clubs now, and I think I've, I've scored against everyone. You know, I was thinking in my own man, I don't know, I think it was in the middle of the night. I think, you know, like <laughs> your man United. I do, so. I do that, would it? Yeah, yeah, I, think, I, don't I, think, done that. I don't think, you know, there's any of the top clubs I hadn't scored against. You know, the Liverpools, your man United, you know, the Chelsea, the City, Man City. Chelsea, yeah. I mean, Ch City were a great side in those days, weren't mm. Man City, you know, the Summer Bees, the Belt. Yeah, yeah. yeah Chelsea, very yeah. good, very good players, yeah. Uh, in 1968, there was a, a fire in the main stand. All right, yeah, yeah. Uh, and Forest had to play six home games at Meadow Lane. That's right, None yeah. of which we won. No, that's correct. But How it, much do you remember about that period then? And what was it like having to play at Meadow Lane? Well, it was strange, really, because um, it, I think it was against Leeds, wasn't it, when the fire was? Yeah, we came in at uh, half-time and the boom, went to the tunnel and they stopped us. And you could see the smoke belling out the dressing rooms then. I remember we all congregating the car park with our kit on. And... Um, <laughs> I think we ended up training at the um, or getting dressed at the um, the cricket ground. In terms of your relationship with the fans back then and the proximity, not just in terms of being close to the pitch, but yeah. emotionally the relationship with supporters. Yeah, uh, you must have been able to go out, but get spotted by almost everyone in your heyday. And you still get spotted by everyone now, well, let alone in, well, in the sixties and seventies. Yeah. What was the relationship like with the supporters compared to how it is for modern footballers? Well, it's difficult because, you know, I, you know, I don't have to deal with that now. But, uh, I mean, I think I don't think social media has helped, has it, Matt, really? No. And, I mean, I, I think we're talking about a little about the abuse that you can get, you know, yeah. players, you know, 
directors, managers, etc., <laughs> etc. Et uh, yeah. You Gesture probably, you probably know better than anybody's <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I just think you're right. What we were saying earlier, conversations that I used to have after a game in in the pub stayed there. You know, in the emotion, yeah. the moment. Yeah. And you, you know, if you lose a match on a Saturday, you, you're a bit annoyed and angry. Mm. You calm down on the Sunday, don't you? Oh, Usually, yeah, you're yeah, a yeah, fan yeah. or a player, and then by Monday you're ready to go again. But what happens now is now. Can, no, in that hour, people are able to sort of vent oh, it socially. Oh, no, so you get, you get these sort of yeah. incredible comments, you know. Yeah. So I think all <laughs> football clubs at the moment on social media, if you win, you're going to win the title. Oh, yeah, if yeah. you lose, it's the worst club that oh, ever existed. Absolutely. You know, so that's what happens. But hey. And everybody's like, to blame, aren't the manager, yeah, the player, yeah, exactly. you know, the staff, etc. The ball was wrong, you know. A bit yeah. like Mourinho, isn't it? You know, when, he, <laughs> yeah, yeah. When, when he doesn't win a game, everybody's at fault by him, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> like, I, get it, I get it. And I, I think ultimately, football's always been a way of Tell me, John, of, I mean, you're of, venting, in it. of venting, aren't they? You know, for some fans, going on a Saturday afternoon is your way of getting rid of oh, all yeah, your emotions. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and, and a lot of that fun. anger really yeah, isn't yeah. directed at the club. No, it's anger at life, life your you job, mean? or yeah, exactly. what, like their own. Well, I think in the old days, it was like this cloth cap, cap image, wasn't it? You know, where people work six days a week, five days a week in a factory, yeah. mundane jobs. Yeah. And it, it allowed them to go and support the Timoletto steam on yeah. a Saturday, didn't have a few yeah. drinks with the pals. I don't know, Johnny probably told me better. Does that image gone out of the game a wee no, bit? No, I, I, st- I still you still think, think it's there? I still think people definitely go to a game, meet their mates, it's a social yeah. thing, have a few beers, and, oh, let, yeah. and let off some steam. I think that's yeah. still the case in all football yeah, games. Yeah, exactly what it is. yeah, yeah. In terms of terrace culture back then, do you remember any of it? I mean, it, fans were so closer to the pitch back well, then. Well, there were, yeah, but I think there was quite a lot of violence in those days, apparently. You know, I, mean, I remember we used to have our um, meal at the... It's a council office now. It's you know the the big place outside oh, the Cliff, ground. Yeah, yeah. I think it was called a West Bridgeford Hotel. And we used to have our yeah. pre-match meal there, and we used to sit in the room. And you know you could see the fans coming over Trent Bridge, going to the ground, and there was always trouble. Yeah, you know, the police and fans, rival fans. Yeah, so it wasn't you know the violence wasn't particularly good in those did, days. Did you? We often ask our players this, me Mike. Did you did you ever notice it when you were yeah. on the pitch playing on the, on the field? Uh, not particularly, no. Yeah. no they I think all say you, this, don't they? they all yeah, say you, you tend to switch off, really. You know, you hear very few comments actually, apart from when you went down to West Ham where you're nearly on the top. You know, <laughs> you know like when you took a call, you know them. <laughs> yeah, you know, you're, you're Useless, you know. <laughs> it was just Stuart Pearce, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you got all that from the opposition, especially when you're down to, to that part of the world, yeah. And do you just laugh that off when it happens, or well, would it yeah, get inside your head? No, it? no, no, I didn't. You just don't mean that. that. That was how it was, wasn't it, really, yeah. So you mentioned earlier, you know, cleaning boots and things like that. Yeah, it's yeah, always yeah. interesting to hear which forest legend cleaned whose boots, and, and indeed, who cleaned yours? Well, apparently, Robbo said he cleaned mine, didn't he? You know, as his thing about it, Robbo, that I never tipped him at Christmas. Like, when, <laughs> no. you, uh, when you're on about three quid a week, you haven't got a lot of spare money, have <laughs> you? Really? got an extra 50p. <laughs> yeah, crikey, I know, but Robbo says, you know, well, I used to wear white boots and used to put black polish on them, Robbo. I mean, that's how daft it was, funny. <laughs> it's good to know that white boots were around back then. Because yeah, there were one or two, one we, or two. We rail against modern football boot colours, believing that players have always worn black, but obviously no, not. No. Alan Ball had a white pair. Ball, I think Alan Hinton wore. Or them, yeah. We didn't get paid for wearing them, by the way, Matt. You know, I think it was just that uh, there was one or two hanging about, so I tried them, but uh, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. that's actually, that leads me on to a good area because Go a on. lot of the players in the 80s and 90s had a McDonald's black card where they would get, or a gold card, where they would get free, free Mackey McDonald's. D's. Free, free McDonald's. When was this? In the 80s and 90s. Oh, right, okay. So when you were playing, what did you get any perks from local businesses or pubs or anything like that? Well, the odd one, I remember, you know, you'd probably open the old bud teeth, would give us a pair of trousers, you know, something <laughs> like that. And uh, that was it, you know, probably wanted about 10 grand now, wasn't it, Johnny? Yeah. If you're lucky to get a pair of trousers or a handkerchief, if you're lucky, really, but... Um, Any cars? Did they give you cars? Yeah, no. no. The, the Mark lend you one for about a week, but that was... I remember, <laughs> yeah. my God, I think it was a big Ford garage just not far from here called Hangar, and I think they, they lent me one for a week, but that was about it. You never got sponsored cars or anything, really, not like they do now, yeah. What about a Christmas bonus or anything like that? <laughs> well, I think we've got a turkey. Uh, <laughs> oh, well, that's nice, really. a turkey yeah, in a car for a week. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, that was off the club, the turkey, yeah. <laughs> so, very kind of them, wasn't it? Had, it's a different world, wasn't it? It was. How do you think... Because every... Every generation says football's gone mad and the money's gone mad. And I remember in the 90s, people saying, well, yeah, the, the money yeah. was out of control. And now yeah. you talk to players in the 90s who say, yeah. well, we weren't making much in my day, you know. No. And it's obviously relative to the period before. Oh, of course, yeah. How do you feel about the way that football has subsequently <laughs> developed? Christ, it's, well, it's unbelievable, isn't it, really? How it's, I mean, I think it's all Premier League stuff now, though, isn't it, really? I think it's all determined by Premiership football, isn't it, really? And, what, what you know, we were talking earlier, John and I, and if Forrest could get into there, it'd be a totally different ball game, wouldn't it? be fantastic for the city, the fans, the club. So you need to get into that premiership to sort of get the massive rewards, don't you? I mean, 
and I think the other part is the invent of uh, advent of Sky TV, isn't yes. it? Really, that's when the wages have started Changed to spiral. Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely, yeah. In terms of what motivates a player, uh, and I suppose yeah. you can only really comment for yourself, but. Mm-hmm. Uh, Obviously, the idea is that they get play, paid a lot of money because the careers well, are short. Well, it wasn't motivated by money when we played. Well, that's what, well, that's what I was going to ask. What, what, what were the things that motivated you apart from a desire? Scoring to... a goal. Oh, seriously, it was. I'd seen the same name in the paper. You know, I'd scored a goal, I scored two goals rather than you get. Well, it was. Four, you know what the bonus was? Four pound, and that was tacked. So you might come out with two pound fifty per goal. No, no, that's four pound for for a win. We got in those days, and two pound for a draw on top of your basic okay. wage. So as I say, you know, it, um, but it gave you a thrill, you know, for your team to win and you to do well and score a goal. I think that gave you, gave, gave you enormous pleasure, yeah. You know, to, to make the fans go, on, go home happy. We're recording this in the week where Manchester City and Tottenham played on a Wembley field that was yeah, slightly yeah. chewed up after the yeah, NFL. That's right. You must have played on some pitches well, that, that make that look like silk. Well, well absolutely. But I mean, Wembley in particular, you know, when I played for England, it was they'd had the Horse of the Year show, and I know it's, it's every boy's <laughs> dream, isn't it? You the know, Horse you, of the Year you, show. They'd, they'd had that on. I remember that. Yes, and I remember. Um, you know, it's every boy's dream when you watch a cup final. Oh God, would love to play at Wembley, yeah. wouldn't you? Yeah. And uh, ironically, I did do eventually, but it, it was dreadful. So the city ground pitch... In it wasn't the... bad, wasn't bad. OK, so the late 60s, early 70s wasn't too bad. No. Not too bobbly and It wasn't the worst. I mean, I think the worst time it got bobbly, when it was these cold winds in March and it had you know, become firm, it was, it, was, it, it was very difficult then, you know, very bobbly and bouncy. But I liked it when it was a bit, bit of give in the ground and it was nice and dr- a bit of drizzle about and, uh, you know, you could skin the full backs. And obviously, <laughs> as, a, as, as a fast... Uh, 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 goal scorer uh-huh. and a nippy player you'd have been targeted by some of the hardest men Ooh, in football oh, back then are there absolutely. any in particular that, that you feared there was a few dotted about in those days wasn't it cold blood you know you could mention quite a number you know the tommy smith the norman hunters oh yeah bite your legs yeah the few at chelsea weren't the ron harris McCray, yeah, yeah. chopper yeah. harris even his name chopper yeah, chopper yeah. harris but the, you know probably the most, dis- most difficult opponent he was was i was telling johnny earlier probably paul reaney at leeds yeah, you know yeah. quick Nasty, put his foot in. So yeah, he was a difficult opponent. But um, I mean, I, I, when I talked to you know our good friend Robbo about it, and I, y- y- you would presume it would be easy to play now as a forward because they're so so well protected now, aren't they? You know, you'd have one go at your full back. He's only got to pull your shirt. First yellow card, next one is off, isn't it? So you presume it would be easy. And I don't, I don't know. I'm not, you know, I'm not playing now. But, but uh, it was a far more physical game when you were playing. Oh, it, you very knocked physical. about a lot. Well, I think Robbo used Robbo said, I know, many a time. John said it was. He thought it was a di- most difficult time to play football. You know, in, in that period, yeah. Well, so Graham Sooner said a great thing this weekend. He says people often say, "Could old players play now?" He said, I don't say that. I say, could players now have played 20, yes, years ago? Yes, yes, yes. Very good point. Yeah, it is a good point, really actually. Good point. Yeah. I, I, I honestly think the great players of yesterday could play now. Oh, absolutely. Oh, without a doubt. Oh, there's no, no two ways about it. You know, they say the game's quick. I don't know. But I mean, I've played some bloody frantic, hectic games when I played where the, the boots were flying and the fur was flying. So, um, no, I, I honestly believe, you know, the George Best, the Bobby Charles, the Dennis Laws, whoever you want to speak about, the great players of those days. Ian Sullivan. Well, no, I wouldn't, wouldn't want to say that. But, uh, yeah, absolutely, they could play now. Matt, yeah. Well, that's a, good, that's a good area because there's a lot of emphasis now, particularly at international level. You think about what Southgate's doing with England on uh-huh. de- developing technical ability yep. and what training is for footballers. Mm-hmm. What was training like for you back then? Well, there was no coaching. You know, I, you know, I think we, we learnt our inherent skills by, as a kid growing up, you know, you used to come home from school and you don't see it now, probably, you're probably in some areas you do, but you know, the coats were down, you're playing 15 a side and you didn't, I don't think you knew you were sort of learning your skills, you know, because it was just something you did naturally, you know, how to beat people, how to dribble, how to pass the ball, how to shoot, it came as a natural thing. And I still, I'm still a firm believer if you don't have any natural ability, I think you're going to find it hard to be a yeah. top-class player. No, I, did. I think you've got to have a certain amount of natural ability. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, Matt, you weren't bad. <laughs> oh, no, you, you know as a kid, don't you? You know, like kids yeah. develop so quick. That's right. Yeah. Even yeah. at primary school, you know who's good yeah. and who isn't. Mm. By the age of about seven, yeah. yeah. who's good and who isn't is well, already I, I, I remember doing a, a coaching course for Bobby Moore, poor old Bobby Moore, great Bobby yeah, Moore. Yeah, Bobby Moore's got soccer schools, wasn't it? Yeah, and I, I did one thing in Nottingham for him. You know, if you line six kids up against a wall and just threw the ball, and you could tell straight away who the natural was. It's amazing, really. Some would find it very difficult to do. Others would just naturally trap past it, you know. 
just just something simplistic like that. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because there was this, this whole thing of Usain Bolt wanting to become a professional footballer. Yeah. And someone I don't know who it was this week said he had a first touch like a trampoline. Did he really? <laughs> <laughs> just so he had the worst first touch. I I'd remember ever being seen. in um, in a pub once and somebody was talking about uh, Dirk Kite. You know, from Liverpool. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah, he had yeah. A lot of energy and, and somebody Liverpool, you know, obviously yeah. the thing went. He can run all day, Dirk Kite. And I can remember my father's voice just going, "So could Seb Cole. Oh yeah, <laughs> make him a footballer, yeah. son. Yeah. <laughs> that was the one about who's quit. Yeah, so was Linford Christie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you know? funny thing when I was a kid uh, very similar to what Ian was saying I was, I was playing about 8 9 years of age uh, in Merthyr yeah. and we were, I was walking off the pitch and my grandfather went who's the lad there with the red hair and I remember looking across going ooh and he went the boy there was you know I went oh his name's Mark Pembridge and I always remember saying that my, oh, grandfather, yeah, my, yeah. my grandfather saying he'll make it and like it's, it's a bit like you were saying it's like you can almost tell mm. he was so good even at that age yeah. and he literally used to score 4 or 5 goals a game and he couldn't yeah, get the ball yeah. off him but even at sort of 9 or 10 yeah. you just thought it's well, funny is, how you can yeah, yeah, yeah. take it further oh, forward to professional career isn't it yeah. well, even shoulders. at primary school you could tell he was better and then you go to secondary school and yeah. I went to Beckett which yeah. is just around the corner from Forest mm -hmm. and Jermaine Genus was in my oh, former yeah, JJ, school yeah, yeah. and it was just a different world like, yeah. I've got mm -hmm. in my primary school f um, team but by the time I got to secondary school, there was no chance. No, really, you didn't. Yeah, people with, yeah. like, even just the fitness of oh, yeah, players yeah. at that age. Yeah, he yeah. was incredible. Like, oh, it was JJ obvious. He was player. always oh, going to go. On. Techni technically, very good JJ, yeah. wasn't he? Yeah. So if he's in your school team, you think, well, there's no chance yeah. for a podgy. Did you kid. play for Scunthorpe Boys? Is that what you Did I? Yeah. Yes, I did. Yeah. Good area for producing footballers, wasn't oh, yeah. it? Ray yeah, Clemens because I played in the same them. school boy team as Graham Taylor, actually. Wow. The late Graham Taylor, yeah. He was. Uh, and. Because he was quite a he's quite a strong boy at that age, fifteen, and I was pretty small, and he got a trial for England boys because of his strength and height, and yeah. because I was so small, they didn't, you know, the, the two was recommended, and I didn't get the trial, yeah. But you know, Graham Graham turned out to be a fantastic manager, a lovely man by the way. Oh, what well, very popular, man. yeah, yeah, really nice guy. I knew him well, Graham, and oh, so sad him. when he passed away, wasn't it? Yeah. I remember meeting him because we used to live in Snenton. Any time we walked past oh, the right, forest yeah. ground. I'd always say to my mum, you've got to take your camera. Because as a kid, I just thought, well, that's where all the Forest players live. They're just always out <laughs> yeah. the ground. That's where they work. Mm -hmm. And we'd walk past the back of the old Trent end, and she had a little old Brownie 127 camera. Great camera. We're walking past this two blokes, and I was six or seven years old. I didn't know who he was. Yeah. My mum stopped this bloke and said, excuse me, you're the new Forest manager. He said, no, 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 love, I'm the new England manager. It was Taylor. He just got oh, the was England Graham, job. was it? Yeah, Graham yeah, and yeah. Laurie McMenemy later That's turned cool. out. Yeah, yeah, and me yeah. and my sister are there, and um, she said, oh, can we have a photo? And he's, he, I'm very eager to have a photo with a New England manager, oh, but my course, sister was very yeah. shy. Yeah. Graham Taylor's going, oh, what's your name? She goes, oh, my name's Ruth. He goes, come on, Ruth. I didn't come all the way to Nottingham to get stood up by you. Come on, get in the photo oh, with Graham. We've yeah. got this lovely photo of us with yeah. kids as Graham Taylor. He said, who's your favourite player? I said, oh, Stuart Pearce. He said, well, I've come to talk to Mr Clough about um, Stuart oh, right, today. Okay. I think not long after that, he made Psycho his captain. So it was just this incredible... I've yeah. always remembered just how he yeah. gave us so much time. Oh, uh, lovely Just man, as members really. of the public. And so there was much. no sense of status no, no. with him or... His, his father, you know, was a sports reporter for the Scunthorpe, I think that's what right. call it, Evening yeah. Telegraph, yeah, yeah his yeah. father. Poach, they used to call him the Poacher, yeah. So my father knew him quite well, actually. So, you know, they used to watch the games together, naturally. And, uh, yeah, but lo lovely, lovely man. Such a dignified man. He was, um, absolutely, yeah. Now, we do have to talk about a notorious incident. And I recently read about... I've just finished reading uh -huh. With Clough by Taylor, <laughs> which is a notorious book in Forest history. And you have to sort of search for it on the internet, the book that Peter Taylor wrote <laughs> about his relationship with Brian Clough. And I don't think it helped their relationship. Well, they never really recovered from that. It never recovered no, after that. Did, did um, and, of course, John Robertson moving to Derby. Yeah, that, I think that was... A, that was, that was a tin one, hat. <laughs> well, we talked to, we talked to Robbo about that. I don't want to talk um, about that, OK? <laughs> but... You had your own experience, and, and Peter Taylor talks about it in the book, uh, of, well, not quite signing for Derby, technically signing for them and not signing for them. You were paraded on the pitch at the baseball ground and then ended mm. up joining United. Yeah. Tell us exactly what happened. Well, well, it was an embarrassing weekend, I must say, you know, at, at the onset there. Well, what happened was, um, it was strange, really, because... Matt Gillis, I think he was a manager at Forest, and he called me into his office. He said, um, I think they decided they wanted to sell me because, you know, I think the club was in a bit of a financial state at the, at the present time, at that particular time, should I say. And um, he said, there's a couple of clubs want to pay the money. He said, Man United and, and Derby County. He said, but I'd like you to speak to Ma uh, Manchester United first. So Frank O'Farrell was a manager, so... Uh, we met them at the Ed Walton Hotel, which I don't think is there now, but it was quite a nice, pleasant hotel down in Ed Walton there. And um, 
O'Farrell came. I was on my own, left to negotiate, which was I think was one of the highest fees at the time, two hundred thousand. I think that was the, myself and Alan Ball. I think, and then negotiations broke down. To cut a long story short, so I came out. There was Matt Gillis, the manager, uh, Ken Smith, the club secretary, Bill Anderson, the assistant manager. Um, I said I can't agree terms with Mr. O'Farrell. He said, Oh, he said I'll get you Brian Clough, and this was Matt Gillis. He rings a number, Brian Clough. I said, it's uh, Ian Storymore here, Brian. He said, uh, I said, I, I can't agree terms with Mr. Ove. Where are you, young man? Where are you? <laughs> yes. And I said, I'm at the end Walton Hotel. And he said, don't move. We'll be there in 20 minutes. So, of course, when I told Matt Gillis that Brian Clough was on, oh, God, it was like the parting of the waves. He went, the assistant manager went, the club set left me all on my own waiting for Brian Clough and Peter Taylor. And I thought, you know, naive 26, 27 year old, you know, I thought, God Christ, well, I got to deal with those two on my own. So I was in the room shaking, waiting for him to come. So <laughs> then the walk, both threw the jackets up, sit down, hey, I want to be a Derby County player. Don't worry about it, we'll look after you, be back in the England team soon, you know, don't just you do what you're told, etc., etc. <laughs> It was funny. He said, we've got to ask you a few questions, you know, before we, before we sign a not dotted line. He says, do you like a drink? I said, well, well not really, Mr. Clough. I don't, I don't not, I wouldn't say I'm a big drinker now again. He says, what about smoking? No, sir, I've never smoked. He says, what about, are you, are you a gambler? I says, well, not really. I've mean, fluttered out again. He says, Peter, we can't sign him. He says, he's a liar. <laughs> 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 I'm only kidding, young man. I'm only kidding. <laughs> wow. So, anyhow, the bottom line, I did sign the forms, you know. He, he asked me what I said, I want this. And he says, well, you're not going to get much, you know, you're not going to get as much as Roy McFarland. I said, well, he won't get you 20 goals a season. I thought, oh, I'll stick my neck out here. Good. Anyhow, so, signed the forms. I, I admit it, I signed the forms. Yeah. He said to Peter, Peter, take him back to the, um, they used to say the hotel in Derby, the Midland Hotel. The opposite Friday station, night, yeah. Correct. Take him back there. I'll go down and sort these <laughs> out at the city ground. So I'm having dinner. He eventually comes back. It must have been late in the evening. And uh, all sorted. He's, they've signed the phone, blah. So believed him. Yeah. Of course, next day it's all, it's all went hair shaped, didn't it, really? So you're, you walked out on the pitch pre match. Well, he told me that everything was done and dusted. So he said, well, you know, introduced to the crowd, got a, a wonderful ovation from the back. <laughs> oh, my God, I can't imagine it. Yeah, embarrassing now, Imagine isn't it? it happening do you know, now. Do you know, I wish I'd never gone there because I'd got this great affinity with the... I didn't think it through, to be honest. You know, this great affinity with the Forage fans. Yeah. And once I th I'm letting them down coming here, you know, I shouldn't have, you know, I shouldn't even talk to them. Not because I didn't think they were a good team or a, or a great manager, Brian Club, but, you know, I probably shouldn't have... Let it got that far, really. So, how ferocious was the Forest Riv Derby oh, rivalry back then? Well, as it is now, I would suggest, yeah. yeah, probably just the same, really. There's certainly a rivalry, isn't there? Yeah. And did you? Were you at the? Wouldn't you have been paraded on the pitch at mm -hmm. Derby then? Did you stop the night? He, he stopped the night in Derby. He made me stay in the hotel and taken out for a meal, etc. Next day, my wife got a a phone call from a Forest chairman, Tony Wood, to say, "Listen, tell him there's no way." In a million years, we're going to let him go to Derby County. <laughs> but the strange thing was, Matt Gillis got me his number to ring him. So at that stage, and the story still develops from here, but at, yeah. at that stage, did you have any abuse in the street or, or fans mm, giving you any stick? Not really, no. It wasn't, it wasn't abundant in those days, was it, really? I don't think it was a social... But, hey, I might have gone now. It was social media, absolutely. I'd have got oh, slaughtered. Oh, but, and I think also what's, what's interesting is, and Ian is a modest man, but a lot of people tell me that even Robbo and, and, and Pierce... Ian is the ki was the king of the trend end. Yeah, more right. songs about <coughs> Ian Story more than any other player. It is. I mean, I'm not just saying oh, that. Thank you. I mean, so it would it would have been a, oh, yeah. a massive thing. Yeah, for you I, I, done I, that. You see, yeah. I, I'm really glad in a way now because of you know my affinity with the fans and you know I love the club now and l let me say while I'm saying that I think since this new regime had taken over. They've treated myself in particular and all the old players absolutely wonderfully. The, oh, the, you know, the hospitality has been fantastic. The chairman, Nick Randall, and I'm going to embarrass Johnny now. They've been absolutely superb to us. And <laughs> Can I, embarrass him because like, he's been <laughs> awful. No, no, he hasn't to me. Been, I'm, 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 we're very grateful for the hospitality. And, you know, I'm putting this on record. They're absolutely fantastic. Oh, that's good to the know. The club oh, now. It's the least, least two boys deserve it. And, and Johnny yeah. Owen, yeah. Well, absolutely fantastic. Fans want to know that 
ex and I think they're going in the right way. Players, we, you know, we just got to well. you know hope that they can take the next step forward on the field now and get into that Premiership. It'll make such a difference to everybody concerned with the club. Well, it'll make a huge. Di- I mean, the, I, I don't think there's anything else I want out of life more than to see. Oh, it'd be fantastic, the wouldn't it? Really, really yeah. yeah. But, but just a small thing, I suppose, is you've signed the papers. I mean, these days yeah, that would have been that would have been enforced. That was something possibly. I, I, yeah, I don't know, but I did sign in. I, I can't, you know, get out of that. There was a football league inquiry. Had to go to that. A, a number of people, we, we told people on social media that were coming on, we had a lot of yeah. emails and, qu- and uh, questions. All of them, almost all of them, are on this particular question. Really, go on. And this Ashley Porter was the first one to put it. He says, is it true when the deal for you to do- go to Derby collapsed and you went to United instead, Brian Clough called you a house every time he met you? Well, he didn't. He did on one particular occasion. I was, I was, I was telling Johnny one day that he was speaking Cluffy at the... Hey, let me tell you, I've still got a lot of respect for him and what he did as a manager, don't get me wrong. I mean, you know, it was just the way he treated me, really. But uh, we're, we're, I think he was, Cluffy was speaking at the, at the Forest Ground quite a number of years later. I think it was when Paul Hart was the manager, I think. Anyway, we were in this room prior to Cluffy speaking, to going into the main room. And uh, crowd of play, I think Robbo might have been there, Paul Hart, Ian Bowyer, Liam O'Kane, people that Cluffy knew and the players knew and probably played for him or worked for him. And uh, he comes in, he's shaking all the hands, how are you, why? And he suddenly turned around and saw me. And he walked over, he says, hey, oh, it's you, is it, he said. He says, they're telling me you're not such a big a <laughs> as you used to be. <laughs> Oh, yeah, man. so that was Cluffy, yeah. I think he actually spoke to me after that again, yeah. <laughs> Saw him in the newspaper once, so, yeah. But listen, great listen, great man. Did, did wonderful things for the football club, so you can't take that away from him. That was just my uh, my experience with him. Uh, so you did, it, it, instead of going to Dobby, you went to Manchester United. I did, yeah. Terrible, terrible, wasn't it? Really? <laughs> <laughs> Probably the right decision in terms of your legacy at Forest. Yeah, it's, I think it's so. a relief oh, oh, that you oh, went oh, there. Absolutely, I think so. I think it was the right decision, you know. I wouldn't have wanted to... You know, it was wrong, really, for me to even think about going to Derby. Uh, you went on after after playing to, to play and manage at, at yeah. Burton, yeah. Um, uh, where you were succeeded by Neil Warnock. That's uh, right. You were also chief scout at Forest for a while. Yeah, quite when Paul was there, Paul Hart and Dave Bassett, yeah. And that was that was quite a nice period with those two, yeah. Robbo tells me that Martin, bless him, yeah, wouldn't only. sign a player unless you'd seen him first and OK. Well, that's, yeah, I mean... We, we, that's how much they trust in judgment. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think Mark, Martin, you know, we'd, we'd been friends and grown up together at Forest, Martin, a great, great guy. And, he'd, he, you know, he's been successful as a manager. You know, I mean, having a bit of a difficult time in Ireland at the moment, but, I mean, that, that, that's a difficult job anyhow. So, um, yeah, I mean, I worked for Martin and, and myself and Robert. We, we really enjoyed it, yeah. But Martin was a, a real workhorse. And you know, if I had gone and seen a player abroad, at least he would go out and see him. Now, whether he said yes or no, he had the last decision, which is quite right. You know, I can't understand these managers now that don't make the last decision about players. You know, it makes you wonder sometimes whether the Mourinho's and... You know, these are the great managers. Whether they see these plays, sometimes they just sort of um, lumped at them. But um, no, Martin would always he worked extremely hard. Martin in that respect, and um, he did well at Villa. Martin, and yeah. since he's left, I mean, you know, it's, it, it tells its, it's own struggled, story, doesn't it? Struggled, it? Struggled, just come back with it to you with Manchester United. Yeah, you played with Georgie Best. Didn't Absolutely. You? Yeah. Um, and you had a, you were really unlucky there, Ian, in the sense you had that injury. Oh, bad which, injury. Which, yeah. Such a shame. I, I was I was at Old Trafford last mm-hmm. season, and somebody was talking to me. Who was who was there? One of the boys who worked for MUTV was yeah. saying. There was a game when you and uh, Best were on either wing. Yeah. And he said, it was just before your injury, he said it was tragic because you destroyed this team. Yeah, you know? and, yeah, and I mean, yeah. it must have been such an exciting time. It's oh, it was, shame. you know. It's such a shame almost, isn't it? Really? I think really, you know, at the time, Tommy Dock had come in, you know. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And he said a nice thing to me. I mean, I probably shouldn't say it because I'm, you know, blow to my old uh, trumpet here, but he... I remember after one game, I think we'd played Leeds at home and, you know, had a, had a really good game that day. We drew 1-1. They were a good side then, Leeds. And just before the Arsenal game, he came up to me, which I thought was very kind of me. He said, Ian, he said, I didn't realise what a good player you were, you know. And uh, so that was nice of Tommy Dockery because he, uh, you know, to be fair to Tommy, he did what needed doing that Frank O'Farrell didn't do. I think, to be fair to the old guard, they were coming to the the end of their careers, you know, the um, Bobby Charlton, the the Dennis Laws, who, hey, let me tell you, were fantastic players, absolutely fantastic players. But, you know, Everything comes to an end, doesn't it? So, uh, and I think it needed a complete transformation of the team then. And, and at least Doherty came in and did that. One thing we always like to do with our, with our guest team is yeah. ask them the sort of questions that you used to get asked in football magazines. Okay. The sort of fact oh, file Christ. things. <laughs> um, what's your favourite food? Like a bit of steak now and again, a oh, nice fillet steak. Oh, I can't beat a fillet steak. No, no. It's the best, really. Medium rare? 
Oh no 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 medium to well done. Are you? Oh, oh yeah. really? Medium rare now. Oh yeah, I like. Oh, I like oh no no oh no! I see a bit of blood coming. Out. <laughs> <laughs> Takes you back. Like me to death. <laughs> <laughs> Takes you back to seventies football. Yeah. yeah. Favorite film? Favorite film? Do you know I'm not a film goer at all. I'm really not. Honestly, I'm not not interested in films at all. Really. I don't think I particularly got one. I think it was the African Queen. Was that? Was that all right? Yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> well, I should ask you, Johnny. What's your favourite food? Food. Yeah. Food. Um, bread is it? Uh, yeah, well, yeah. Leeks. <laughs> yeah, of course. Bread, um, leeks, lamb. I think I, I, it's a really interesting. So, a hangman's breakfast, basically, they, they let you eat whatever you want, didn't they? That was a famous thing. So yes. What would, you, what would your hangman's breakfast be? Oh, what's your final meal what be? Death row. Yeah, I think oh, I think blimey. That's an interesting. It's question. a great question. And I just thought to myself, do you know what it would be? Actually, it would be a, a traditional. Breakfast: bacon, egg, beans, fresh cut in bread, butter, lashings of cup of tea. Butter. Oh, butter. That, that, <laughs> that would be that would be my last meal. So I do love bacon, egg, beans, <sighs> toast. What would you What would your last meal be? Steak, I think. Fillet steak, yeah. medium rare, yeah. mashed potato, must- nice glass of red wine. Oh, yeah. bottle of red. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just well, that was it. Surely, if you're about to face the hangman or they did they said that you eat whatever but you just wanted. drink as much as possible. Yeah, yeah. So you would drink. drink yourself into a stupor, yeah. pass out, and then who yeah, that's right, yeah. get. <laughs> <laughs> Might not be so bad. <laughs> if you hadn't been a footballer, Ian, what would you have done? Journalist. Oh, brilliant! Yeah, I would have loved to have been a journalist. I did. I went and did a course, um, you know, a journalistic course when I was at night school when I was young here. Yeah, so I think I'm not saying I could have done, but I would have liked to got into that really. Yeah, sports journalism or journalism sports, general? I think. Oh, yeah. yeah, 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 football in particular, absolutely. Yeah. So whether I could have done it, I don't know. But yeah, I, I did touch typing and. Uh, you know, sort of could do a bit of shorthand at one time and uh, wrote a little column. There was a, uh, not even post, had a, a sister paper called The Guardian Journal, I think, many, many years ago. Was it called The Guardian Journal? Anyway, it came out, I don't know if it came out once a week, but I did a column in that. So uh, I remember a lad called Dave Beresford, who uh, still keep in touch with you. He, uh, he used to help me with it and it was called Moore's Corner, yeah. Quite a big oh, nice. thing, yeah, which was many years ago. So, oh, so then you got to do it. I quite enjoyed that, yeah. Yeah, good man. Favourite band or artiste? Favourite artiste or band, yeah. Would you believe it? You're gonna, people are going to say, oh, I like status quo, would you believe it? Brilliant! You know what? <laughs> it's so weird. Uh, I watched a documentary about them I last did. night did on, the, on the iPlayer. Last week I watched it. It's great. It's brilliant. What's it called? Yeah. More Quo or something there? Yeah, and yeah. Weller's oh, on really? it. And, um, yeah. oh, oh, my God, God it's so good. Yes. I do, I've seen quite a number of times live in Nottingham. I do like their music. I just like... You know, I first heard it years and years ago, driving the car. You know, you sort of go... They're brilliant. Beat it, you know, yeah. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> yeah, I mean, oh, you know, I, really, I do enjoy the music. So I'm not an old Neanderthal, you know, so... Uh, oh, I love... I saw yeah, them at Glastonbury. Yeah. Rolling Stones, I like, yeah. I mean, you know, I remember so seeing the Rolling Stones at... Um, on Derby Road, I forget the old. Um, was it? The, was it the Albert Hall? Oh, there is the Albert Hall there. Yeah, on I know. We were on the roundabout near, yeah, the, near yeah, the cathedral. Yeah, just, just above the roundabout. That's yeah. right. Yeah. I think it was about 1964. Wow. Yeah, fantastic. Seen yeah, so I've always followed them. Hmm? Seen the Rolling Stones? Yeah. Oh, Not oh. Only then, I haven't seen them since. No, I wish I'd like the time to see them. Isn't it? 1964. Yeah, oh, they're fantastic. Like, yeah. Do you know? I was, if I tell you a funny story, I was in the office the other day with the media bunch. And they're obviously a lot younger than me now, and it was the 40th anniversary of the Athens game. Yeah. So I said, well, why don't we do something really clever, like, you know, and use the, the, the line 40 years ago today, you know, as if 20 years ago today, Sergeant Pepper. And they all looked at me blank, and I went, do you know what Sergeant Pepper is? And they all went, no, I don't know what you're talking oh, about. Oh, my word. It's worrying, isn't it? It's worrying, isn't it? It's the state of the world. <laughs> you know what Sergeant Pepper is over there? Know what's yeah, I didn't know what Bigger problems face in society than the I mean, legacy they, of Sergeant Pepper. I mean, they played some great music. Now, like, you know, I, I remember them coming to um, the cinema, didn't they? Nottingham in the 60s, didn't they? The oh. Beatles. Oh, is that right? Oh, the, the town was a standstill. Would it be the late 60s, early 60s? The pure beat away. Yeah, yeah, yeah mid 60s. Yeah. Oh, God, the town was just at a standstill. Yeah, the, the cinema on the left hand. Is it the Odeon, was it? Yeah. That's right, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, fantastic. I that Odeon. Yeah, great. I days. saw the Ron Stones this year. Have you? First time I've ever oh, seen fantastic. them. Yeah, it was absolutely fantastic. Where at? Twickenham. Oh. It was oh. good. I mean, if you get to see the. If I can say as a 35 year old, I've seen the Rolling Stones. Yeah. Oh, it's out of this world, That's isn't amazing, it? amazing. Yeah. Oh, dear. Yeah. So I would like, love to see them in the Albert Hall in 1964 in Nottingham. I bet that was a gig. Ooh, Young yeah. Jack. Ian Story more at the back. Brian <laughs> <laughs> Jones. Yeah. Blue Iron with. Yeah, fantastic. Johnny, who's your favourite band or artiste? Of all time? Yeah. It is the Beatles. Beatles, yeah? Oh, I like the Beatles. What would Macca say if he was here? He'd agree. He would. Oh, he'd go Bowie, wouldn't he? He'd go Bowie. But he would would agree the Beatles, I think, you know, have a huge influence on 20th century art, don't they? So, yeah. I listen, I love the Stone Roses when they come out. Oh, man. That was when I was 17, 18, and they were were incredible. Spike Island. Yeah, I was there. 
I went to Spike Island. Oh my word! You should make a film about it. <laughs> <laughs> but everyone says that to you. Every yeah, time you've yeah. got a memory, you should make a film about it, Johnny. Yeah, yeah. This question used to be put to players in the Forest program in the nineties, oh, so God. this isn't a product of my fevered no. imagination. If you could change one part of your anatomy, what would oh, it be? Christ, one part of my anatomy. Blimey, that's a strange one. Yeah, teeth. You've yeah. got great big teeth. No, yeah, you like have, yeah. teeth. They're part of your brand. Yeah. Big yeah. teeth, Johnny. Just wish I'd kept my hair a bit longer. I think. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah, hair, so there hair. you go. Yeah. I'd be, yeah. I'd be a bit slimmer if I could. Yeah. Well, yeah. I can if I put the effort in. <laughs> um, best forest memory, Ian? Best forest memory. Well, I would imagine that... Um, let me think. I think probably that Everton game, I would imagine, yeah. I mean, it was uh, it was such a wonderful day. <gasps> Have you still got the match ball? No, no, you didn't. Oh, God, match ball. So you didn't get to well, keep it back then? Well, I mean, they'd probably charge you a tenner for it in those days if you wanted it, yeah. Have you kept any of your stuff from your playing career? <laughs> I ask everyone this, well, but I'm obsessed with it. Well, funny enough, my father used to keep a, kept a scrapbook. Excellent. Yeah, and I got, you know, quite a lot of nice memorabilia in that. Yeah, he did, he did keep a scrapbook, my four or father, yeah, so... Yeah, it's nice to drift through it now and again and bring oh, back happy be, memories. I'd do yeah. that every day. I'd sit down in my favourite big chair. Would you? Four pints of London <laughs> Pride. And just, well, more than four. And then just go through that. Yeah, yeah. The scrapbook of yourself yeah. being a legend. Yeah, it does remind you of some very, very happy days. I must say, the people you met, the people you played with, yeah. And, and, uh, any shirts? Do you keep any shirts? Yes. Uh, yeah, the England, England shirts. Yeah, yeah. Oh, got those. Yeah, the England cap, caps. Cap, yeah, 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 I got those. Forest yeah. shirts? Um, I, I don't think I've got a forest shirt. No, I don't, yeah. Um, I mean, you, I mean, you weren't allowed to keep them in those days, Matt Crank. You couldn't swap oh, course, shirts and throw them in the crowd, and that, et cetera, et cetera. You'd have to pay for them. Imagine it, you know, you're throwing shirts so in the crowd. I haven't got a shirt. I mean, there's, yeah. a, there's a retro shirt called the Ian Story More, the mid-60s shirt with the big That's bars. right. They're yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it's named after you, and you haven't got one of your own? No, I haven't got one, no, no. We should get you one. We should get you one. Oh, it's very Get you one for Christmas. Yeah, yeah. lovely. Thanks, we'll have, a, we'll have a Red Dog's Christmas do. Yeah. We'll get you an Ian Story More. Absolutely. Oh, mate. Um... Johnny, what's your f- best Forest memory? Match-wise, I've got to say that the, the Arsenal game in the FA Cup was a left. Oh, it was amazing! It was just great. Oh, my God. Do you know what God. I did as well after that, which is What's your Forest, Forest Arsenal game? Yeah, Forest 4 2 oh, 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 yeah, yeah. what, what I did as well, which was, I hadn't done for you, was I had I recorded it and watched it loads of times after yeah, the yeah, points. Yeah, I did that. Yeah. Which yeah. I hadn't done for years because it was such the perfect game. It ebbed and flowed yeah. and they looked like they were coming back and then yeah. Forest went away. And it was just that moment when the fourth winning when you know you're going to win. Just yeah. to, that was, I, thought, I thought the atmosphere that day was absolutely yeah. fantastic. It was good, wasn't it? I don't remember last laughing at a game as much as I have at that at, towards at, the end I was the, squealing with laughter at the very chance and all that just it? hilarious yeah. it was it was because Arsenal just were never in the game no, no. Really. and they won the champions because you know what they did which was brilliant two years before in the League Cup Forrest famously sing this song you know Champions of Europe you'll never sing that oh yeah, yeah. and Arsenal came back with a very witty uh, Champions of Europe uh, you weren't even born right? <laughs> which I thought I thought was about that's good but then the yeah, Forest come back Forest come back was you won't be alive and I can always remember Arsenal my mate who was an Arsenal fan who was in the mm. end said we, I can never remember an end mm. going there's no comeback from yeah, that yeah. you know what I mean I just thought, I thought that was a beautiful moment some of them were I'll pose you a question do you think a provis- uh, pro- uh, provisional club will ever win the, um, the European Cup again you know, a town like Leicester, Nottingham, Derby. It's going to be as if it's anyone in it. I, th- I think the big thing for me is, is that is that people go now, or oh, you know, it, it's almost impossible. But it was impossible then. Yes. And that's what I, I always looked. Yeah, I yeah. always looked at the thing, and I, and I always would say to people, and they'd say to me, "Yeah, but they beat Malmo in the tournament that year." Were Liverpool, Real Madrid, Liverpool, Juventus. Yeah, yeah. They were all in there. Oh, yeah, all in, you know, they were all in there. And, but you know, this, it sounds like, better when you say yeah. it. Juventus. <laughs> so they were all in there. So it, I always think to myself. What Clef did in, with, with that team was a miracle. Oh, remarkable, yeah, absolutely. Sense, you know, yeah, and and I, I, I think it, it was so rare. I can't see it happening again because it was, it was a moment where a great manager and a great bunch of players converged perfectly. Together, yeah. It was a perfect storm almost, you know? Absolutely, It was yeah. phenomenal. Uh, Ian, as you would imagine, when we announced on social media we were coming on, we had yes. so many people sending wonderful messages for oh, you. Ah, it's very kind um, of them. Forrest Dave, at Forrest Dave 2 on Twitter says, the first game I ever went to was against Everton. Oh, blind. In the FA Cup, we won 3-2 and Story Moore got a hat-trick. Great yeah. game, never forget. It was his first game. Was it? Well, he was fortunate, wasn't he? <laughs> very fortunate indeed. Wayne Gallaghan uh, says, I met him on my first ever visit to the city ground when I was nine years old back in 1968. He was on the treatment table, but what a marvellous <laughs> player. Oh, well, thank you very much for those comments, gentlemen. It's very kind of you. We had loads, uh, just too many to read out. Yeah. Everyone, yeah. to a man and woman and, and child, was uh, no, it's very kind of just overwhelmed it. that we were bringing you in. And, thank you very uh, much, as we indeed. Been. It's, it's been, been a pleasure. It's been absolutely superb. Yeah, yeah well. And, and you're a legend of this football club. Not just me, it's the fans. Uh, 
Be in story more, my lord. Story <laughs> more. Story more, my lord. Story more. Story more, my lord. Story more. Oh, lord. Story more. What a song. Uh, oh, that, we'll use that one instead. That's nice. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Brilliant.